Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, all, especially to um, the Australians. It's our Sunday morning here for most of you. It's probably Saturday night in the US and uh, somewhere in between uh, for the Europeans or elsewhere in the world. Let me know if you can't hear or see me properly. I'll check the chat. And remember, if you want to ask me a particular question, make sure you had add a whole bunch of emojis before your comment, just so I can kind of see it's a question. I think I've tuned my mic to my liking. I listened, um, I don't know what happened, but I screwed up my settings and it sounded really bad um, the last time I used it. Not really bad, but didn't like it. So let me know if it sounds fine to you guys. Sound is good, cool. Um, anyway, yeah, the last couple of videos got some really, really nice responses and some very uh, well thought out personal experience type of stuff from people, which is really, really nice. I really like when people are, are taking this, uh, this stuff seriously because it, it is important. And when you apply it in a mature way, you think about this stuff, your life gets better and you have less stress. Uh, and particularly what I was talking about in the last couple of videos this week was the degree to which everyone's getting entertained by this stuff that really you took, should take with a grain of salt. But more importantly, I think a lot of people feel good being entertained, but they don't really know that they're being entertained. It's just, oh, it's really great seeing this dumpster fire happening. And it kind of makes some of us feel good about ourselves in relation to it and that's always it's not a good thing where you feel better about yourself you know kind of um uh there's moments uh, you've heard people uh say it and it might have happened to you where like say for instance you you've got a good life but you you get complacent you take it for granted and you're kind of just bored or down on yourself or the same routines and you feel flat. That's probably the right word. You feel flat. And then all of a sudden, like you're a bit, you might get grumpy or whatever because you're impatient. And then you see someone less fortunate than you, than you. You see someone in a wheelchair or someone homeless. And then you go, ah, oh, I should be grateful because by comparison, look at them. I've always thought that's a bit cringy because... For you're feeling better about yourself in comparison to someone who's got it worse than you. It should sort of splash cold water on your face, yeah, but also it should uh, make you realize that what you should be grateful for and also not to make yourself feel better by putting other people down. That kind of, um, the, the contrast. I think women do it a fair bit, especially within their circles, how they're very catty and they backstab. They get off on elevating themselves by standing on top of somebody else. So, um, so yeah, this week's videos were pretty good, especially the comments and the responses under the videos in terms of um, seeing if it's actually applicable. Though the popular channels that are fun to watch, maybe they entertain you. It's like reality TV. You watch it and it's like slowing down to watch a car crash. It's, it's kind of addictive. It's like guys who watch PORN online. It's, um, it's a time sink. And you might think, oh, it's just harmless fun. But if you go back to the same kind of entertainment that really at its core has not just no morals, bad morals. We're watching people exhibiting the worst morals. And you think, oh, I'm learning what, uh, what hot stoves not to touch. But what happens is um, you associate the entertainment that stimulates you, that makes you feel good. You start to associate it with love or affection or companionship or like, oh, 
I want to I want to feel good. I want to get together with the guys as we sling mud at people we don't like. We we talk bad about somebody or whatever. It, it's similar to uh, you know a child who's never been sort of uh, loved or given the time and attention. And um, the only way they could do it was to um, spurg out or uh, if their parent was abusive, that's the only way they got the parent's attention. So they learned that that was love. And and I started to think, I think a lot of us with online entertainment, it's a similar thing. We might say, oh, it's just fun. But have you actually noticed, like if you stepped away from social media and then you go back and talk to the friends you used to talk to a lot and engage in the stupid childish schoolyard conversations about pointing to stupid people in streams and uh, feeds on Instagram and look how dumb they are and look how awful they are. We laugh at people to feel bad about, uh, better about that ourselves. Have you noticed when you go back after you've kind of detoxed or taken kind of a holiday away from that life that kind of drained you, you go back, you try and talk to those people and you realize, oh, geez, I'm looking at them uh, from a third person perspective, like almost from uh, a stranger with fresh eyes. Was I like that? Was that how I was talking? Was that how, was that how I was getting off? And I think that's what can happen with a lot of us that go to channels that are very entertaining, but subliminally they are educating and imprinting on you. And a lot of people think they're very, people like to think they're intelligent. Human beings, we, as a defensive thing to keep us safe, we love to be very sure of ourselves, even if it's defensively posturing, um, uh, kind of to fake it till you make it kind of way. But you, you, you want to excuse bad behavior. You know how we excuse things with our biases? We come up with all manner of very intelligent ways of word salading ourselves to excuse our addictions and bad stuff. Again, the most common is guys who watch the worst kind of stuff online. And I'm not saying women do too, but predominantly guys love getting online and, you know, watching the worst kind of intimacy and um, saying, oh, it's just a bit of fun. It's a bit of a release. And it is. But if you're doing it all day, if it becomes a hobby or to legitimize you wasting your time and that kind of stuff imprinting on you, you start saying, I'm a connoisseur of watching those kind of uh, videos. I'm a connoisseur of OnlyFans. You know, I, I, I follow this person. They've got a really nice personality. Um, I categorize them. So you, you can intelligently and lexically fool yourself into your biases. And I think that's the same thing when we really get stimulated in the worst moralistic kind of way by these channels that are fun, but they are actually talking about lessons and what is right and what is wrong. So you're thinking like reality TV, oh my God, can you, can you believe how wrong she was, how much of a bitch she was? But you're saying, you're saying it's entertaining, you're saying, you're saying it's entertaining. But really, how is it unconsciously imprinting on you? So that was, and uh, I started to kind of relay that to the guys that kind of will say, all women are like this. There's no way you can do this. Life is black and white here. And because of fear and certainty, they want life to be binary. And I get the instinct to be safe. But where we live is the gray area. And we're denying the reality of a gray area that we live. We do not live in perfection, in the perfection of absolutes. We don't live in perfect worlds. We may live there momentarily. You get great news. That's fantastic. It goes down. Really, really awful moment uh, in life that kind of shocks you to your core. You're there for a moment and then kind of... You, you always want your body... And life always wants to kind of go back to equilibrium. So those moments, the really high highs and low lows, they're momentary. And I think with these channels where we're kind of sleepwalking, uh, we're ignoring how it's actually imprinting on us and how it affects our views and behaviors. Wherever you spend most of your time, that's what kind of uh, person you become. That's the language you start to speak. They're the ideas that seep into you. 
what's the saying? You you are the combination of the closest five people around you or the five people you spend the most time with. As I said, everything in life is a relationship. If you're always watching that content, that's one of the that's one of the relationships you're having. That's one of the closest relationships in your life. If you watch it hours a day, if you watch P O R N all day, they're the closest relationships you have. Anyway, I'll um I'll read. If you got any questions or comments, let me know. Um, I'll read some of your comments in the stream. Uh, A Nell says, "Did you watch the Tinder Swindler on Netflix?" No, it's been recommended to me. Uh, I may I may give it time if I get a chance. Donna says, "I really like this week's videos. Thank you. Um, I enjoyed making them. Um, again, I, I want people to think about uh, think about their lives. If you actually think fairly, like if you're frustrated how people treat you, and then you kind of go, "Oh, holy crap! Like, I don't actually, I don't care about treating people that way." And I'm not saying you should be a doormat. But if you don't exhibit the traits, if you keep hiding the traits and saying, well, I'm never going to show the best parts of me until people do first, that's what everyone's doing. And so I'm not saying you keep doing it. It's like when you, you meet a stranger or go to the supermarket. It's like your simple first introduction, like hello, goodbye, thank you. Be polite and nice, but to let someone to, into your world be very aware of those first formal steps with strangers and people. You know, are they earning your trust? What kind of person are they? How do you feel around them? And really investigate the why. Why do you feel good? Are you feeling good because it's familiar from the past, like all the other women you dated, and you're feeling a, a, a familiar good, but actually it's not. You've actually worked out that, no, no, this is um, negative imprinting. Like I said, you, you might have in childhood got negative stroking or affection or you didn't get affection from your parents and you're always running after it. And so you meet a woman that kind of plays hard to get or is um, uh, kind of rude and obnoxious. And that's the way maybe either what you got from your parents and you, re and you related love and affection to that and that's what feels comfortable and loving to you. Or you didn't get affection and you spend the rest of your life chasing what you didn't get but it's only when you kind of understand where your deficiencies are, where your Achilles heels are. Oh, by the way, um, this weekend I've got a family thing on, an important family thing on. So I doubt whether I'll be able to do a stream. But what I'll do is the best comments of this week, like the ones that I usually read and stuff, what I'm going to do is uh, do a larger video that's almost replace the stream today that I usually do on Sunday morning. So I'll upload it for this time so you guys can watch it. Unfortunately, you won't be able to participate because I won't be live, but it'll kind of be a Q&A of questions you guys have and and really interesting comments that I, that I read next week. So I apologize, but um, family. And... Um, yeah, so keep the comments coming, guys. Uh, martial arts oriental medicine says, human, what bothers me is that people dump their programs they've been drilled of onto me or those like us who are not as such and they had this idea, we are such, had that experience yesterday. Hey, Quaz. Ah, Vero says, lesson learned from my father. If you're not worth, if you're not worth to be laughed at, you're not worth much. Really? Okay. I kind of, I thought you were going to say, if a person doesn't have a sense of humor, if they can't laugh at themselves, they're not worth much. 
I would agree with that. I'm not sure what I think about that comment. I'm not disparaging your father, by the way, but I'm just trying to think about the comment. If you're not worth to be laughed at, you're not worth much. If you mean uh, the sense of humor thing, I agree. I've always found that um, people who get offended very easily, they don't have a sense of humor. They can't laugh at themselves. Um, especially if um, you're face to face and they can actually see your, your visual cues. They can see the person you are, how you're animated, more of a genuine expression of you. If they can't sort of uh, tell what you're trying to communicate, uh, then that kind of, um, yeah, that, that distances me from a person who doesn't have a more secure uh, nature and is m not as a, if they can't tell the difference between a joke or a inquisitive question, if everything is rude and everything needs to be politically correct around them, they're not my kind of person. And again, that comes from you being honest with who you can have deep relationships with and who you can only have surface, behind glass, respectful, respectable, distant relationships with. And unfortunately, I think a lot of people, when they say that all women are like that, all women are behind glass, and you really can't have any depth with them, you can't have a deep relationship or a friendship with anyone, you can't, there's no such thing as a committed relationship anymore. That's in the past, you boomer. Then... If you believe that, and remember, whatever you believe, it's it's going to be true because you're going to operate that way, whether it is true or not. Then when you're having these relationships behind glass because you insist that they are that way, and then at the same time you complain about the effect of intentionally, willfully, and stubbornly wanting those kind of relationships, this is what grinds my gears the most about that kind of whole Chad PUA crowd where they're so confident about themselves because they use science and biology like female nature and talk in absolutes. They'll say like, I'm going to be a, a slab of granite. She's never going to hurt me. I'm going to keep her at a distance. I dump any girl after a month or two months. I keep spinning plates. I don't care how good she is, how perfect she is. I'll get rid of her because I don't want to catch feelings and I'll mitigate any kind of danger or heartbreak. I'll never feel that again. Ah, I'll be happy, right? And then at the same time, later on, they, they kind of uh, talk about how she broke uh, his heart, how she betrayed you, how she, you know, it's kind of all this stuff like how she, in a human way, like double-crossed you or was immoral, but you're acting immorally. You're acting like a robot and so without feeling, so you don't get hurt, but you expect her not to. Again, being hypocritical, I don't have much respect for. Again, philosophically, that's why guys gravitate to philosophy. Philosophy is consistent. It works for you. It works for me. It's the golden rule, how I treat you, how, how you treat me. It's philos Philosophy is not hypocritical. That's why guys love it. It makes sense. The scales balance with a philosophical, um, a philosophically tight argument. It makes sense and you can go forward and try and apply it in life. But um, that kind of thing, I can do this, but you can't. It's everywhere in the white crowd. Like this group can say this or do this, but you can't. Women can do this, but you can't. But some stuff is just about being a fair human being. It's got nothing to do with the color of your skin, your race, your gender, anything. People are using it as an excuse because they want to dominate and treat people like crap. I don't want to have anything to do with those people. I will talk to anyone on my channel who's intelligent and fair. I will talk, and I've said before, I've, I used to work probably about 10 years ago in a small company, and one of the people next to me in the office, she was like a 1960s um, FE eminist, like a you know first wave, but I had the best conversations with her. She was really one of those kind of... Um, Camille Paglia types, where she just literally wanted not to be uh, not to be condescended to. She wanted the same rights. She wanted to walk down an alleyway at night and assume the responsibility if she gets attacked. She wants the freedom of that. And so she was really interesting. We disagreed on a lot, but they were intelligent, never personally degrading. Like none of us said, oh, you're this or you're that. We never 
personally attack people. She was one of the very few, but I don't mind talking to anyone. I don't care if you're married. I don't care what you believe in. But these people are like, whether it's people in the male um, self-help area online, or if it's a religion, or if it's politics, it seems like we're all, we're politically trying to relate to each other, and it just dehumanizes anything. And then you wonder, why can't I find a girlfriend? Why can't I find love? Or some of the people I can't get along with, they'll justify it by laughing at me and saying, ha, 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 LOL, human, you still believe in love. Well, good luck. Have fun. Like the people I associate with um, and that I enjoy having conversations with, we find these ideas interesting and we try to apply it, but we ignore and we don't sort of wade in the pig sludge of everything you people do and you complain. You guys jump up and down on shit and then complain about the shit. I don't walk in it. I can talk about it from a distance. All you guys are like like waiting in dumpster fires and then war and complaining about the heat. Enough analogies from me, sorry. Remember, any questions you want to ask me, uh, on the right-hand side in the chat stream, uh, put a whole bunch of emojis next to your questions so I can see them better because I miss a few people's questions. But yeah, there's there's a few people online. We've got 120-something people online. And um, people are chatting to each other. Uh, not everyone's asking me a question. So if you want to ask me a question, a whole bunch of emojis at the at the start. Uh, an amateur boxer, his mate, says, can, I can't say that word, can turning your lights out be justified when a man has truly lost his will to live as abstract concepts no longer entertain? Uh, that I'll come back to that. That's an important point. As abstract concepts no longer entertain, losing their meaning as their imminent demise is, well, imminent. Uh, th that's an important part. Abstract concept, con concepts. That's why I keep asking guys to, to, to look at their ethics. Ethics are applicable. Don't wade in the idea of women or the idea of life or the idea of changing your life. Practice, practice, practice. It needs to be applicable. For me, it's even... Uh, I was talking last night uh, uh, to someone about movies. And for me, if, if dramas and movies... I get off on their application and their realism. For me, it can't just be entertaining. And that's just the way I'm wired. I know a lot of people can, like they can just enjoy entertainment, but the way I'm wired, it needs to be real and make sense and have, like I, I can sort of be entertained on the surface to a degree, that's fine. But what really lights my fire and switches my light bulb off and say like, that was an awesome movie is where, it's entertaining. It's got all the fun stuff and uh, whatever I particularly like to be entertained by. But on top, it's imbued with intelligent story and it, like uh, intelligence and like um, uh, like lessons or meanings or really well-written lines that certain characters say and go, oh, like that character's really smart. I loved his character the most. Then you say, why? Because he was intelligent. Because he learned from his, mis his mistakes, because he was thinking, because he was responsible, you start realizing why you like things. And then you start sort of saying, I find that stuff important and, in and um, impressive when I watch it in movies. Why don't I be the thing I respect? So I guess I'm, I'm saying that the abstract concepts is the, is the actual thing that may help some people. I'm guessing, again, I, I don't know everyone's situation, but to pull them back from thinking nihilistically that, oh, what's the point of life and all this stuff, is stop thinking in abstracts. When you sit on your own all the time, when you're in your head, your thoughts are abstract as well. It's just you with your abstract thoughts. You need to make them real. So talk to people, have conversations, try and make friends, um, try and touch the world, go for a walk. You know, have more of a tactile life than a completely cerebral life on your own where you're trying to figure a life out and make sense. Because especially guys, we go nuts. We can be much more cerebral, like wanting to figure things out because our instinct is we have to. If guys, that's why we're so concerned with intelligence and philosophy is because it's more 
it's a uh, more of like a need for us because if uh, it's addictive because we need to make sense of things because if we don't we can be homeless we can't just magical think our way through everything whereas women can always at the you know they've got the ace up their sleeve right at the end they can go I can just be childish and irresponsible my whole life and believe in you unicorns and you know love will conquer all and logic is bs and because at the end a woman as as long as she's not on the extreme ends of the bell curve where you know she's like the worst of the worst psychotic personality and she's morbidly obese or something like unless someone's like the extreme uh sort of uh person that you wouldn't go near you could see them from an airplane and avoid them a woman can always just kind of put on a smile and a short skirt and she'll find somebody. She can she can not be homeless 90 to 95% of the time with minimal effort. A guy has to generally, compared to a woman, has to put a lot more cognitive effort in. And as such, I think his reflex to logic, ontology, reason, things, you know, one plus one needs to equal two. That's why guys do that. And that's why guys kind of can't always communicate with women where she just wants you to hear her emoting and talking. She doesn't want you to fix her problems. But a guy's instinct is that's the way I'm built. Because if things don't make sense and aren't fixed, and if the walls aren't put up and the bears can come in, like we can all die. I'm responsible for that. I'm responsible for me. And then because if the the environment gets through me, then the whole human race is gone. The women, the children, they're all gone too. So if I'm if the front line of defense, my logic and reason just lets go and becomes like women today that they're pushing us, then it endangers all of society, as is happening. What a rant, human. Yeah, I don't watch much TV as well, guys. The only time I see any episodes is if I go visit family members and they happen to have it on while we're talking. And I look at it and it's that same distance I was talking about where if you're hanging around the wrong people or you're watching this kind of clickbait tabloid style um, dating advice and uh, male self-help, it's very clickbaity. It's uh, really kind of stimulating in the worst kind of moralistic kind of way because it's exciting because you're watching other people, other nutcases ruin their lives and try and have relationships while they tear each other apart. It kind of it makes the hair stand up on the back of my neck. I can't even watch dramas where there's a lot of conflict. Um, I'm a bit of a storyteller and there's one thing that really kind of grates me is whenever I hear... You need conflict in storytelling. You need conflict. You need conflict. And it's like, yeah, everything in me resists that. I can't stand the conflict. I can't, I don't like conflict in my life. I like tranquility. Uh, I like um, intelligence. I like cause and effect. I like, you know, struggle and resolution. But the word, you need conflict. Like for me, that's very kind of, I think feminine, you know, like bimbo, head case, conflict, drama. Oof. I don't like it. But, Look, it might be just me. Chaos for you seventy. Uh, Chaos for you seven twenty eight says, "I feel myself getting dumber when I watch reality TV, so I don't watch reality garbage anymore." Some of the stuff in the relationship advice online is reality TV, guys. I hate to tell you, it's not me sour grapes. Like, I I, I like the personality of some of those guys. Who are the the popular channels in the in the male arena? I like them. They seem like cool guys, but the the show they're doing, um, it's it's more it keeps leaning more and more towards reality TV. The what works, um, you know, the ten tips, the black and white binary rules that there's no gray area with that you have to become this guy. And anything less than that, you're not the best version of yourself. You're not a high value male. She's not, uh, you need to be a high value male and it's a binary thing. There's no scale. And she has to be the highest value female. And you don't accept anything other than that binary top, top tier. 
and you and you're you're always chasing that empty numeric um numeric numeric target of where happiness is and it's an empty number it's empty mathematics because you don't actually imbue it through who you are do i like that ah uh, get a great uh, get a fast car cuz women like it do i give a crap about cars and you might try a car and it, and it reinforces like i don't care yeah impressive nice not for me there's a lot of stuff I see in life and I admire it because I can tell it's high quality. But I don't want it because it requires me to have that in my life or maintain it or pay for it or the maintenance required for it or to be involved with that thing in my life, whether it's a person or a pastime or a new lifestyle. I have to give so much time to that high value lifestyle or person that again, like everything I enjoy about my life, there's a trade-off. How much of a trade-off? Some of that, not some, the vast majority of the high-value male lifestyle, if you've got kind of just more uh, pedestrian kind of everyday guy, simple things you enjoy, 95% of your world is gone. It's not a trade-off. You, you basically get rid of who you are to because that high-value male lifestyle that they sell you, you need to, to give 95% of your time on that treadmill to maintain it Maybe if you're lucky enough to get it, and I say lucky, glibly, it's with a tongue in my cheek, but... Uh, and then afterwards, it's, it's, it's kind of similar to getting with the wrong woman for the wrong reasons. She scoops you out, and afterwards, after a breakup, you feel destroyed because you don't know who you are. You're in a cool shell. You're on holiday. You thought you could live on holiday, and you forgot where home was. Like you, you should protect where home is and home is who you are. Yes, grow, make yourself better, but really decide and decide knowing that it's not fear-based. You're not saying, yeah, I really like this, but you only like it because you're either lazy to do anymore or you're actually fearful of rejection or something. But if you honestly would rather prefer something else and it's not because you need praise from someone else. You want to you wanna get a, a better car or move somewhere else or change your life for you, your health, you know. Um, really be honest with why you want it and then do it. But um, if you're doing it for the approval of others and the approval of the people you're getting is these superficial people that are robots, men or women, they can smile all they want on their thumbnails and, and give you their three-step programs and say, hey, guys. These are the three rules to like the perfect life. Number one, subscribe to my thousand dollar course. Number two, um, anyway. Just the guy says, don't you think you are underestimating men by thinking we ha we hold a binary life view or that we are easily influenced by manosphere as if it was our only source of information? No, but I think in private, most guys I talk to are more realistic than women you talk to. It takes a lot to pull a woman out of her shell to, to kind of expose who she really is and what she thinks. I think guys are pretty quick to do that. You can... I like that m most guys, they can be honest one-on-one. -on -one. When they get in packs, and that's this is true for men and women, society as a whole, you get in packs, people become animals and they just become lemmings. What I'm saying is when you notice those channels uh, and the way everyone starts talking in the comments and, and associating in some of those channels that have like interviews with a whole bunch of people, it's kind of look like going into a chicken coop and everyone's cackling and everyone's kind of joining in in a frenzy. And um, there's less considered uh, thought about what's being said. Like when you talk one-on-one, -on -one, I'm just saying consider how, how much it becomes like reality TV, people trying to claw at each other and they're trying to win and they're trying to survive in conversation and protect uh, their, their, their biases and things like that. That's what I'm saying. Uh, Vero says, laughing at oneself shouldn't affect your ego. It shouldn't. 
I think there's a saying, I can't remember, not I think there, there is a saying, but I can't remember who said it. Um, the saying is, the surest sign of intelligence I've seen is the ability to laugh at oneself. Immediately, it makes me think it's why most female comedians aren't funny. It's why women require men to be funny, because they find it hard. Because if you can laugh at yourself, you have a more secure stance in the world. You're, you've got less fear. You're less insecure. You're not, you don't have your hand on your sword ready to fight at every word. There, there's kind of a very good reason that kind of you need to break the glass, you know, you, for the fire extinguisher, so to speak. Sean says, wrong assessment, human. You go in a minefield expecting to step on a mine. You handle a gun thinking it is loaded. If it doesn't go off, it wasn't you. It was actually immorally. Uh, I don't deny that there's bad people, there's minefields out there. The whole dating field's a minefield. I'm saying is your assessment before you do something blindly. Don't just go, oh, it feels good and I'll only, like, I'll allow myself to have blind fun this much, right? This is how most people are. They recognize it's pretty bad out there and they just say, I only, it's kind of like having a leash on you that you can only go so far, right? And people just put that leash on themselves like a dog and they, they go, this will keep me safe because I can't move any further. So I'll go on Tinder, I'll do this, I'll... I'll interact with the world blindly because I've got this leash, a fixed rule where I won't go any further. What I'm saying is take the leash off and you yourself, you don't actually even go into any environment unless you assess whether it's for you, if it's rational, if it's dangerous or whatever. That's my point of view. But if you want, you can live your life any way you want, Sean. And um, a lot of guys think the same way. They think it's kind of like expecting the worst and then uh, not even being surprised at the, be uh, the best, because if you actually expect everyone to be either black or white, you're either e uh, like really evil or an angel, um, there's no gray area. Because think of it this way, there could, like from a guy's point of view, so some of you guys can be maybe sympathetic to this. Uh, I'm, I'm doing what I have to do to women sometimes, is like imbue an analogy through a very like gendered, uh, away say you're a guy right and you got divorced or really like traumatized like a woman really did a number on you the worst kind of woman right uh, like a narcissistic sociopathic heartless and i know some of you guys will laugh and go oh all women are like that human okay make a joke about everything or maybe get a bit serious too say someone really hurts you and it's understandable and you got my sympathy right Say you really be hurt like, hurt like that. So if we're going to talk binaries, if there's no gray areas, right? If you're not going to have the nuance of the gray area, you could have a woman that's really nice. But if you're kind of just completely got a shut off and you're hurt and she refuses to see kind of, oh, have a heart, sweetheart. Like I just had my heart broken. I went through a lot, but she's very binary. Like a lot of guys like, nah. You've either got to be completely healthy and beautiful and with it and confident, or I don't want to even talk to you. I just want a high value male. Whereas you would require a bit of sympathy, a bit of gray area, a bit of understanding, a bit of humanity. I think that's what's missing. We're reaching for the perfect confident hero or the perfect sexy, beautiful woman. These perfectly emotional and physical in every way people, but Virtually no one is like that. And there's nothing wrong with aspiring to be as perfect as possible. But knowing that we live in the gray area of like a, a scale that hopefully goes upwards where we can improve ourselves and recognize good qualities. That's what I'm about. So you can think that every woman is a landmine and it's just a matter of time. If you think that way, that's what it'll be. And I'm not saying that women, like uh, most women out there aren't really hard to be with compared to our ancestors. Again, I've said in the video, you ask your grandmothers, they'll agree with guys. Yeah, women are awful today compared to their time. I'm saying 
if you're honest and you you would like female company but you're trying to pretend not pretend keep yourself rationally safe by overcompensating the danger to keep yourself safe rationally like if if i expect the worst but am surprised with the best then the surprises are very rare or if ever come about so for me it's uh, choosing how you want to be too so i don't discount um how bad it is out there how many minds are out there in the field but i'm saying that um every step if you decide like if 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 you go out there blindly everything like it's almost guaranteed you're going to step on a mine but if you take a very careful step and look every step you take it's still a minefield but it's a, a safer minefield because of the way you operate. Yeah, are you a person like wielding a gun willy nilly, or are you a responsible gun owner? Are you riding your motorcycle to its limit, like you're, you're riding three hundred kilometers down, uh, uh, kilometers an hour down a freeway at night with your lights off in the rain with no visibility, drunk, or? Are you riding your motorcycle with protective gear? You've got experience. You abide by the rules. You, you play it safe. It's sunlight, great visibility. Um, do you know what I mean? We Again, you can do what you want, but I get annoyed where guys think, well, there's only one way. You can only ride your bike like a moron. Therefore, I'm never riding a motorcycle. That's insane. Again, you, you whatever you want in life, you can do it as responsibly as you can, as though as long as you admit the realistic risks. I think people, both men and women today, because that's that's the way most of them are out there. Like the majority of men and women, are the same. That's why it's the only way they can get get together. Women become the way they are. Men start following suit. Women, men are downstream from women romantically. However, women change. Men accommodate to give women what they want. So. Men are acting like women in this way that we're, we're pushing each other away. We don't trust each other. We're all landmines and we're finding it very, very difficult. It's like a blood sport out there trying to be with each other. Whereas um, uh, I think Boffin was the one mentioned it to me and we'll have a chat about this in the future that um, it's only a couple of generations ago that dating and love and relationships and all that sort of stuff, it was a part of everyday life. It was something you look forward to. It was fun. Now it's reality TV antagonistic. Like, um, it's kind of like um, bungee jumping. Like a combination of fear and exhilaration. There is so much fear and danger imbued in it. And I'm not saying it's not real, but our attitudes make it even worse. And I refuse. I, I like to have the hygiene of my life as stable as possible that's what i'm saying i'm i'm much more for controlling your life and and having handles on your life rather than taking your your hands off the steering wheel and saying oh there's no free will there's no control i might as well take my hands off the steering wheel no there is some you can't control a lot of stuff but you can control a little bit if you're conscious and stubbornly conscious to do so for your own well-being there's no point saying the world's unfair when you're unfair to yourself like if you don't care about yourself, I've said this about women, single mothers and stuff. I, I don't care more about your kids than you do. Don't tell me, oh, my children, I'm a single mum. I don't care. You're not my woman. It's not my kids. Like I do not care. And especially when she's like drinking or she didn't care about who she had kids with or it's her third child with her second or third husband. It's like, I don't have any sympathy more than you for your kids. I don't have any more, like I can have sympathy, sympathy for someone's struggle, but if you want me to care more about your struggle and 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 um, take on more responsibility than you because you're just lazy or you don't care or you can't, I can have sympathy for your inability, but I refuse to take on more burden than you. Do you know what I mean? And it's the same with guys in the comment section, binary thinking, and then on the on the other end, they want sympathy. But they don't want to try their best. I respect the guy who tries his best, but he realizes and he's honest about, yeah, I screwed up. Yeah, I went out with this. I should have known better. I respect that kind of guy. But I do not respect the binary guy and saying like, all women are like this. 
and you try and relate to women in the worst kind of way, the way they do, the way that you don't like, you are going to get the same results. You are going to get the same awful kind of interactions. And then you're going to have fun with this tabloid style dating callback. Oh, let me tell you what women are like. I just went out with a girl that blah, blah, blah. Yeah, great. Great. Again, great. I just went out on a motorcycle in the rain without any protective gear, drunk, and I smashed into a wall. Let me tell you how bad motorcycle riding is. Quasiman Dias will tell you, you know, he, he's got a lifestyle of sailing and living on the boat. If you're blind and irresponsible, you could rationally, if you're lazy, blind, irresponsible, and it's not for you, and uh, you're not a hev heavily, irres uh, you're not a heavily responsible person, then it is almost completely dangerous. There's like no upside. But if you see the reality of what you want in life, and you structure it and take your time and you're patient and you and the map that you create for your life and you try and stick to it as much as you can. That's what it's about. This kind of binary thinking, oh, I just don't. You can't improve. It's like, oh, that's just the way I am. That's just the way women are. Oh, we're going to die one day. What's the point? It's all so simple, isn't it? I'm trying to figure my life out as things go on, but I think I'm trying to be more realistic. I don't understand why these guys come online telling me that I'm wrong. If it's so easy and right, what, why you, what are you trying to figure out? Why are you repeating what's right so often if you know it's right? Like life should be perfect. Like if I can sleep well, I'm not awake all the time complaining about why I can't sleep. I don't know. Anyway. Can, can you see the problems I probably had with women in my past trying to connect and rationalize through this part of my personality? Why it annoyed me so much? This is, again, why. You want one word? That will fix your, not fix, but almost fix all your problems and make the sunshine come out in your life, especially relationships with women, uh, your routines, like where your life will fit much better is compatibility. Stop doing what you've been doing since 18 or for 20 years and it doesn't fit anymore. Really look at what is compatible with you and who is compatible with you and what routines are compatible with you. Fine-tune that. They're dials that are always being fine-tuned. But some guys found something that gave them a buzz when they were 18. They think they found a place to belong with people or something, a hobby or whatever. And it's more comfort now, comfort food, than actual where they are and who they are. If you actually assessed, you, you might actually say, like, why am I? I've been doing this for 20 years. This isn't me anymore. I'm like a, I'm kind of like, uh, like to, to paint a cartoonish analogy, it's like, yeah, I like riding skateboards when I was like a teenage, but now I'm like, um, who am I, Tony Hawk? Like I'm sort of like a 50 year old guy at a skate park with all these like uh, eight to, to 15 year old kids on the quarter pipe. Uh, what am I talking about? And I'm, I'm kind of, I'm older than the mums that bring their kids to, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like assess where you are. And I'm not denigrating skateboarding. If you're an older guy and you, you skateboard, skateboard in relation to who you are now in a realistic way. Don't try and be the quarterback, as I said in the video. Don't try and be the young guy. Be the best person you can be now, but the best age and season. Live the season of your life. Stop living in summer if you are rationally ontologically in winter in your life or if you're in autumn stop missing out on a great season like it's gone ladies guys women who are fertile like stop pretending that men will like you in that way or that you still can maybe pop out an egg after 30 when 90 percent of your eggs are dried up 
when you're in your forties, when like you know, like point zero something percent of, I think it's um, after thirty five to forty, the actual chances not just of conceiving, but of bringing a baby to term and giving birth to a healthy uh, baby, it's not just if you can get pregnant. To actually have a healthy baby after thirty five to forty is like point point something chance. It is ridiculously small. You want to talk about bad odds, 99 point something? Like rationally, that's where you kind of say no. But that's magical thinking to me. Magical thinking to me is not, I'm going to have a very mature, sane standard for the kind of person that I think is good. And no one will be allowed through the door if they don't exhibit that entry card to come in. And again, they should have their own for me. We should be compatible where we know who we are and what we want and what's compatible. We don't superficially try to get with each other and hope meaning just magically happens. No, you need to know what meaning is. And then that's the key that you express to each other when you meet each other and you both kind of know that you're compatible because you know what you want and you express it. You don't just go, ooh, my biology thinks they're hot. Let me cross my fingers and roll the dice again. All relationships are luck, aren't they? No, they're not. As someone said recently, you make your own luck. The more conscious and self-aware and self-reflective you are. Hey, RP Mentor. How are you, man? Uh, Red Pill uh, Mentor Tokyo, he left a um, really good uh, comment on uh, my recent video. Where Where is it? It was here. I'll read it out. On how relatable is dating advice to you? He said, I suppose you could call, coin the phrase Kevin Samuels phenomenon, this, be, this being individuals falling into the following criteria. One, taking on the dating advice of those higher in the status hierarchy despite certain factors not applying to you. As in, this is not, to, no, he's saying, uh, this is not to say that there is nothing to learn here, but we can directly observe how people are inclined to adopt anything that is perceived to be coming from individuals of higher status. Yeah, it's admirable. Back in the day, we'd always be mentored to like a, a standard that was higher, that was like admirable to kind of aim for. You become a better person um, if you aim for someone that imbued really good values and virtues of a higher status. You would become a better person individualistically and also objectively that the people in society around you would actually validate and an objective validation of what's good and what's bad, not just them, but you too. It would all go hand in hand. Um, but we can object, uh, uh, but we can directly observe how people are inclined to adopt anything that is perceived to become becoming from individuals of higher status, i.e. living paycheck to paycheck while buying designer clothing. Yeah, you got these people with like a uh, champagne taste, but they have a beer budget. And number two, he, uh, RP Mentor says, a disregard for nuance wherein potentially a person observes and admires what a higher status individual possesses, this being men and women, which results in an unquestioned adoption of their traits. Uh, so you admire their status or what they possess, yeah. And so you adopt, you you walk and quack like a duck them because you think that faking it until you make it will get you what you superficially perceive as like the gold that they have. Um, he continues, there is no pinpointing which characteristics are beneficial and which aren't. As in, i.e. Becky wore diamond earrings and she found a partner, therefore I'm going to wear diamond earrings. Yeah, it's dumb. It's like that. And guys will do the same with, uh, they see Chad's. Chad has a car and he wears these kind of glasses and he shaves his head and he's got a Santa beard. Uh, I will superficially like uh, adopt these affectations and I'll walk and quack like a duck and then I'll get the, the Hollywood lifestyle, right? But it's kind of like, it's very like um, monkey sees monkey, do, uh, monkey, monkey see monkey do. Like you said, Becky's got diamonds. He, she's got a man. I'll, I'll get diamonds. I'll get a man. 
Um, and then <clears throat> finally, RP Mentor says, this reminds me of an experiment wherein the f they fed pigeons at regular intervals. As a consequence of this, the pigeons would repeat the behavior they were engaging in when the food showed up. Some were going back and forth while others were going in circles. Yeah, people are confused. It's, it's kind of like those experiments with animals. You condition them with rewards and food, and then after a while they do it themselves. Like, I just keep doing the thing that I think will get me stuff. The, the, the value, you're not conscious and going, hang on, I'm not getting any food. Or this isn't me. What am I doing? Uh, it was a really good comment. I pinned it under uh, the video of how relatable is dating advice to you, I think. Um, James2774 says, Humans said that guys like to take and dump women after women being hypocritical because they then complain about heartbreak. Oh, okay, you were commenting to somebody else that maybe wasn't getting my point. Yeah, thank you for clarifying on my behalf. Um, yeah, uh, if any of you guys have a microphone and know how to use um, Discord, it's not very hard. Like, go on YouTube, there's like five minute videos that show you how if you have a microphone jump on discord after this stream and um you can have a chat with us a uh, whole bunch of us guys um there's even a women's only chat for women they can chat amongst each other if they want and um yeah if you've got a microphone feel free to jump on and um talk with the guys there Prince Revolver says, do women and men ever get tired of their own BS? And if so, at what point in life do they realize it? That's the difficult thing that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I think a person needs to come to that realization themselves. You can say a lot of stuff and a lot of people find it intellectually curious. They'll nod their heads and go, yeah, I really liked um, what you said, human. So, you know, all this or that was really interesting, Joe. But it won't really hit you like religion and make you adjust your life for the better. So your life is better until you need to. So I think TFM said it in the past where um, most people will not change their lives for the better until pain hits. Unfortunately, 99% of human beings or, okay, let me be generous, maybe 95% because I've got some hope for a minority of people. Um, most people do not change until pain hits it's like not not um studying for the exam until like the last couple of days most people are like that unfortunately there's not many consistent studious rational people that will uh, do what needs to be done in the time that needs to be done when it needs to be done and you look at in the west right the degree of diabetes and obesity right compared to the more sensible way people live and the moral code with which people are shamed and, and, and adjusted and, and are forced to kind of um, be kind of rationally cooperative in society, right? There's no surprise why people let their health go so bad that most of the West is really obese compared to Europe, where they in Europe, they rein themselves back. There's still enough history there compared to this new modern woke way of living that basically is like a fat kid at a buffet saying like, no, you, you eat as much as you want until you pop, keep doing that. And then when you get older, you, you know, you blame McDonald's and you know, most people don't change until they have to, but unfortunately by that time, there's usually irrecoverable damage and just irrecoverable time that you'll never get back. Like, honestly, think to yourself, how many guys would think now, like, you've woken up. If you had, if I had my brain now, how much easier could have my relationships been when I was younger? How many women could I have avoided? How many women could I have treated better through my naivety? That's the lesson. Now, if you're going to be honest, 
do the fair and right thing as much as you can. We're not perfect. I know that. That's part of being fair as well. You know that you're not perfect. Um, yeah, we were naive and cocky and defensive before. It's like being that same teenager when you're older. Like the answer isn't just turning on the youthful naivety and the cockiness when you're older. The answer is adapting to the seasons, to who you are, to learning lessons, to letting go of what no longer fits you. Um, Francis C says, do you think that men and women are watching relationship dramas for different reasons? Yeah, I do. Women, men and women interpret it differently. I'm just telling you from a guy's point of view what I see. And there are a lot of guys that don't even take my point of view. They entertain more. Like I, I need realism. Um, I love movies more and more when there's a lot of intelligence behind it. Well-written, uh, smart characters. I can't watch just a whole bunch of idiots. It's the reason why I could not, I could not get into Breaking Bad. That was a dumpster fire. They just kept getting hotter and hotter as every episode went on. I tried to watch it. I watched the first season with gritted teeth, and then, the, and people said, "Oh, it gets better." It's like, all right. I kept watching it, and then I started watching the second season, and it just kept getting worse. And then I asked someone, "I go, it does it just keep going like this? Is this just like?" A person's life that just descends into hell more and more and more. And basically, they confirmed it to me. Yeah, there's just more and more drama. There's more and more conflict. The situations get worse and worse. It's basically uh, like a series where people are, the person is spinning plates that are on fire. And then he just starts spinning more plates that are on fire. It's like watching someone juggling a chainsaw, one of those circus acts. And they just keep juggling more and more and more. And it's like, you can keep doing it and then all of it, you're basically going to get your arm cut off and we're watching pain misery and I can't get off on it. I, I just can't. And I, I and this is what worries me where people are, re are entertaining themselves with that reality TV kind of like, I like watching car crashes. I don't. But again, I'm the minority. I'm not saying I'm right. This is where I know what I'm like and I can't be entertained with those films. I can't be entertained with those kind of women. And I don't care if I'm right or wrong. This is the way I am. Sorry. This is an interesting, like Pooping While Standing says Spec Ops. He says, um, he's re re responding to Spec Ops. Uh, Spec Ops was saying that he was married four, uh, four times. Engaged four times, married once. Never, ever, ever again. And then Pooping While Standing says, uh, you just picked the wrong woman. Laughing, right? We need to be realistic. Like, as I said, most women and men out there, they are they are childish and irresponsible in the way they act, like chads and bimbos. They get what they get from relationships. But we can't as well make videos about all women are like that, right? But then we accuse women of like, if they're picking... Uh, if they're picking bad boys all the time, what they're attracted to, they're not picking sensible choices. They're not assessing. They're not waiting to see who they go to bed with. You know, they're not they're not being reasonable and logical to get the best chance of happiness with a guy, right? We can't act like them in a male way. That's what I'm saying. If you want to just have fun, have fun, but don't complain about what that lifestyle, what the, the only fruits that that lifestyle really bears, right? But then you can't say, oh, well, all women are like that. There's no such thing as picking the wrong woman because they're all wrong. Why are you picking wrong? What does it say about your standards? That's, you know, like objectively, if you want to be logical about it, like going to bed with a woman, 
it's like they're all the same down there. They look the same. The experience is pretty much, it doesn't, like there's variations, like one slightly better ones. It's not like one is drinking coffee and the other one is like experiencing drinking orange juice. They're, they're all coffee. One's slightly more milky, one's less milk, one's a latte. Like they're all coffee. You know, there's not much of a, you like coffee, you like coffee, big deal, it's coffee. What um, what I'm about on my channel is the specificity of who you are and you want what's for you. If your standard is all women are the same and you've got a very low standard that I just want to go to bed with anyone, throw any decent looking woman at me and that's what I want. Guys are very particular buying the car they want. They don't say, give me the car, any car. Have, have better standards. You don't have to worry about those bimbos. Just look at, look at those channels that are the most popular. Look at the women they have on them. Look at the women they complain about. It's always focused on those kind of women, right? Which rightly we should avoid. But it's not like saying... Look at what an awful woman is, and let's talk about the opposite. Here is the apophatic hot stove, but this is how we let go of it, or this is how to be happier. It's all about how not to be, be miserable. This is the, the, the whole male self-help is about how not to be miserable, how not to get uh, to to avoid a landmine, but there's no going. This is, I think, where the going down your own path is lost. Like, there's no going anywhere. It's about like being free, and that's it. And everyone's at the front of the prison they just got released from, and they're going yay, and they're throwing rocks at the prison. It's like you've been throwing rocks at the prison for like ten or twenty years. There's a world behind you. Like, turn around. You're free. Go. Do something. No, no. I still haven't finished getting my revenge and throwing rocks at the prison. The prison doesn't care. You know that those kind of women don't care. Uh, Pooping while standing says, I'd like human to do a video on how women sabotage other women's relationships because, because they can't stand seeing each other happy in their relationships. And that includes her mother today. Yeah. Women are like crabs in a bucket. They pull each other down much more uh, than men do. But I've noticed guys do it now too. Men have adopted a lot of women's strategies of how they relate to each other now, um, which is a real shame because it's, it's a shame for a guy's happiness. Like a woman's rule book does not work when a man tries to live it in his own life. I realize he wants to get women, but he's kind of doing everything a woman wants to get her. And he's realizing that it doesn't in the end get women because women don't know what they want for the most part. The difference between what women say they want and what they actually choose and what their lives turn out to be is vastly, vastly different. Vastly different. Um, there are a lot of guys that are like that too. But the difference between women who lie to themselves and what the difference between what they say and what they do in their life is like, I think, as I said, because at the end of the day, if a guy doesn't really try and practice some of what he believes when it's time to do it, he will end up homeless. At the end of the day, a woman can just kind of go to bed with any man unless she's like really like, like a one or a two out of 10. But even then, as long as she's not like morbidly un unattractive, and her personality is like isn't ridiculously sociopathic or or obnoxious. Most women can avoid that homelessness, a homelessness, alone survival on their own kind of um, life. Whereas a man can't. It's a it becomes a reality if a man isn't fair with life and fair with others and realistic with himself. Ted one double seven five is human. How do you feel about men who love BBW? Um, is that like guys who, uh, like really large women? Well, if that's what they're into, that's what they're into. But if it's genuine, they like the person for who they are and stuff. It's, it's not for the majority of people. They're outliers. But, um, 
yeah, that's just what they're into, I suppose. But I'm saying there's a difference between if you're chasing approval by becoming someone and you don't care about what you're into. I respect someone who's re really innately into just large women and he just finds them attractive. You know, a Victoria's Secret model is boring or like nothing to him, but a really large obese woman is just like, ah, oh, just love hearts in his eyes. Like he wants her. That's the way he is. But I have a problem with if that guy who loves v really large women, to get approval, he starts trying to love Victoria's Secret models and trying to dress in a way to love Victoria's Secret models. It's the same way back in the day, um, guys who were gay would try to, be, to have a family because it was socially unacceptable. They needed the validation. I respect gay guys who are just honest with who they are and they're gay. It's it's torture living in a life where you're just wanting validation and you're too scared to be who you are. Um, yeah, Quasimandias uh, said something interesting. He said, people who are lacking empathy are distracted by the pain of others. So it's pleasurable to observe it. Empathic people find the pain of others an additional burden. Yeah, I don't like watching uncomfortable moments like that. You know, when, when like a, a situation, you watch it in a movie or you watch reality TV, it's like, I can't watch it. It's embarrassing. Whereas you see other people in the room getting giddy pleasure. It's like, no, no, leave it. Oh, I love watching this. Like they, they're, they're smiling. They love watching car wrecks. It's like, I can't watch it. I really can't. Uh, but that's an, that's an interesting point. And it's not me wanting to, to blow uh, smoke up my butt. But um, I would say objectively and because of what i've i've um been told that i've got a fair degree of empathy and sympathy in me and i tend to get along and i can have better conversations with uh people who have empathy and sympathy because it makes sense right if you don't have sympathy and empathy you're not really listening to someone even talking so you can't even have a conversation so I can have conversations when people, ha other person has natural empathy or sympathy because they will listen to my point of view. They'll really take it in. They will see me. They will hear me. And then they'll reflect their response in the conversation that will keep going because they did empathize or sympathize. But people that just want to talk at you who have no empathy or sympathy, that um, I think that's an objective uh, sort of pointing towards why I have difficulty watching those kind of movies where there's pain. I don't like watching conflict. Uh, I like watching, again, cause and effect and, um, uh, you know, the hero's journey, the the uh, person getting knocked down and then rising up again. Like, I really find that re the redemptive quality of stories really great. But I don't, I can't watch pain. I just can't watch a descent into hell by idiots because there's too many of them in life taking everyone down into hell and laughing at it. Like, I live here too, you know. They appreciate when when people with empathy and sympathy make their lazy lives better, but they don't want to do anything. Let them dis descend into hell. I don't care if they burn. But um, take your heat away from me. Yeah, nice day here in Melbourne today. I like these days. Pooping While Standing says, But human, many men have dated their fiancés for years, thought they knew her well enough to marry her, but once they, that ring goes on, things change, seen it too many times. Uh, did they live together beforehand? Or did they kind of live apart and did the whole traditional thing where the only time they lived together or were around each other 24-7 was after they got married? That's also dangerous. I actually can't. 
if you've taken a lot of time between the important stages of a relationship, like, you know, uh, years to get to know someone, uh, years living together, years before you, like, if you want to get married or have kids, like, you've taken, like, so much time and it's consistently proven itself and you want to go to the next stage, how better way to do it than rationally than that if that's what you want to do, if that you want those stages? Otherwise, you're dis denying yourself the the stages in life you really want to achieve if that's what you want, if you want kids and stuff like that. I, I can't see any more personal mis misery than den denying yourself the happiness in your life, and especially if you can go about it the most rational way you can, the safest way you can in this environment. Again, I don't... You guys can talk to me all you want about like binary perfect sums like things are black and white. All women are like this and there's no chance of love and love, does, love doesn't exist and we're all going to die. And it's like, fine, fine. Have that view. I refuse to. You can laugh at me. I don't care. I know what my life's like. I know what my life's like. I bet you if um, I sat down with many of you nihilistic guys that are so binary, it wouldn't be a very rich conversation. Um, you guys were like your your sentences and your your exploration of like life and what you think would would be pretty short because you're so definite about stuff. And um, yeah, I don't know. Be be what you want, guys. Uh, I know where my life is happier happier. And until it proves otherwise, I won't, um, I won't continue. I won't stop continuing to do what is has worked, and what continues to work. And I am always trying to honestly improve. Um, you guys can be Yoda. Believe you're Yoda. Uh, I, I'm not that sure about myself. I. The, the older I get, the less I know and the less I'm sure. And that's fine. There's too much gray area. That kind of youthful arrogance, I get, I get why. But um, especially like if, if we're all posturing to be, oh, men are more rational than women. Are you being rational? Are you really, are you really being rational with your all women, all men, Chad, Jim, money, business, bro, bimbo kind of binary compartmentalizing of like what life's about is it really that simple what's the saying it's like um life is it life is life is simple but it's not easy something like that there's a saying that's similar to that which is essentially saying like it's not as complicated as we make it but it is it does take work or something, something like that. I mean, that's a question like, if you say there's no right person, um, what's your standards for the right person? Is your standard, um, I am not going to be led by my emotions to the point where I... I won't even entertain the idea of moving in with this person until two years, five years have passed. Like, what's your standard? Or is it just your feeling? <laughs> and your feelings are hiding be behind, uh, I will never even, like, um, let my rational observations even, like, I will never let myself know what is true by observing what's in front of me. I'm going to have a script. I lock in the in um, in my own Ark of the Covenant, and it's kind of inside me and... It's never going to be unearthed. And that's what I believe without adjustment. The, the young version of myself was smarter than the old version of myself. And it wrote a Bible and it locked it and threw away the key. And the old version of myself has to trust the young version of myself. Is that what kind of man you are? I don't know. Personally, I think the younger version of me, while we still have a similar personality, I pretty think he was. Uh, I pretty much think he was a lot more naive and a lot dumber than who I am today. And I'm pretty sure most of you people would acknowledge that too. 
you can pay your older self to your younger self. Are you still following the younger you Bible that you're so sure of? And is that is that your loyalty? You're, you're adhering to the younger version of yourself because you don't want to disappoint that person. Were you hurt then? And this is the Bible you wrote for yourself that made you that kept you safe, and you don't want to let go of it because the instinct is you'll be unsafe, and that that sure that sureness of you know your 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 five rules for dating that are absolute, and uh, you won't look at who you are now. Good questions to ask, I suppose. Roman says, uh, a young corporate woman during the week said to me during the week, if I only can find a rich man. I said, why? Why? And her reply was, so I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> yeah. RP Mentor says, human, how many homeless women have you seen in Australia? I've lived in Japan since 2012, and I believe I've only seen this twice, one of them with a man. Every homeless woman I've seen in Australia, I've seen a couple, not much, the majority, like I'd say on average, the homeless people I see in Australia, I'd say 20%, maybe generous, 15 to 20% of homeless people I see women, but every single one of them has a man around them. There are men around them. I don't know if it's their boyfriend or their man, but um, I don't, I see a majority of homeless men on their own. So that's the difference. Even if there are homeless women, it's very small and the homeless women have men. And the fact that people want to pretend otherwise, oh, there are homeless women. Yeah. What kind? This is the thing, quality. It's not the binary, all women, all men. Okay, let's look at these women. Let's look at the hierarchy, the structure, where these people are, their choices. You know, what kind of homeless men what is their quality? Are they alone? Do they have someone? Do they have support? How healthy are they? How much fear do they have? Uh, how is their health compared to somebody else? How is the health of homeless women compared to the health of homeless men? Yeah, it's too nice to kind of absolve your own uh, ego to kind of not look at the truth of things. Again, lack of sympathy in people. Corey, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Corey's um, and Donna are two regulars uh, that, that have been coming onto uh, my Discord after these chats. Divina says, human, do you visit the Gold Coast or is that only for tourists? I have visited the Gold Coast and I will be visiting, uh, I'd say, soon to see my friend. Uh, one of my best friends moved up there. Um, he got out of Melbourne, he couldn't stand Melbourne because of everything that happened here. So he's basically gone up to the Gold Coast to retire, I think. And he's been wanting me to come up and visit him. So I'll probably do that uh, in the near future. Maybe I'll go up for a weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, Queensland is generally people go up there to retire. It's very, it's a really nice place. Um, it's not at the heart of business or anything. So it's more of a, um, I think the country runs on tourism and people retiring and stuff. It's a very, very tropical, hot, warm place. The top end of Australia compared to here in Melbourne, which kind of resembles more Toronto, Canada. Just the guy says, conflict for the sake of it is stupid. That has to be truly needed in the context of any interesting story. Pooping while studying, standing says, um, but several humans, several studies have shown living together before marriage increases the divorce rate. So how to integrate those two aspects? Well, what's more rational? Blindly marrying somebody and crossing your fingers that you're compatible or rationally knowing that you're compatible and then 
if by some you know small chance it doesn't work out at least you did things the right way like you can't look back and go well what else was i supposed to do and then you and everyone else would agree yeah man like you because you, you wanted kids you you went about it the most sensible way like i can't actually fault the way you went about it but if someone just crosses their fingers and kind of wants to give you the female Cinderella story like it just happened oh you know oh luck it's like women loving surprises like I'd rather do it the male way do it a systematic logical way to get what you want rather than the magical thinking uh romantic female way and hoping you get something you want especially if it's a really important thing in your life studies show but again imbue the studies and the stats through who you are and where you live in life and how you want to live. A lot of those studies don't apply to you or a lot of the studies that will show like 80% risk if you do this because of who you are and you never kind of take those risks, the risk of that happening to you falls to like 10% or it doesn't even exist. So really look at who you are in your life and a lot of those studies really become, uh, the, 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 um, the risks become a lot safer. Again, I'm not saying you should do or not do anything. It's I'm just saying being more realistic about who you are and what your life's about. Some of these questions, I don't know what it means, so I'm not going to read them because I'll just say I don't know what it means. And if you want to ask a question, guys, make sure you um leave some emojis. I'll... um. I've been thinking about um, for any of you guys who YouTube has offered memberships for a while. I've never bothered doing it. But someone just told me it's a good way. Like if any of you guys want to support the channel, um, especially during uh, if any of you guys are regulars or want to, you, you enjoy these streams, um, I'll start, I might actually start opening up a membership. And if you feel like supporting me that way, it gives you kind of things like I can sort of introduce like extras in there like a chat in like there's a, a community tab just for members that we can chat i can have streams with just members if you want uh, but it also gives some of you like if you remember it gives you like um a special icon where you stand out where you if you don't feel like donating or like highlighting your question with a donation um it kind of gives you like priority and i can see your question a lot clearly so there's just all those things so I might do that as an option if any of you guys feel like it. Again, all of this stuff, like I really appreciate you guys who donate and it goes back in the channel and it goes back into my equipment and it keeps me going and it helps out with bills and things like that. So I really appreciate it. So if you got anything out of this, I really appreciate donations and Patreon support and all that sort of stuff. But um, I still put out these videos and, and stuff for free. So if any of you guys want to support this Patreon, there's uh, PayPal, there's Super Chat donations, uh, like some of you guys have been giving, which I really appreciate. Uh, like Martial Arts Oriental Medicine, thank you very much for your generous donation. I appreciate it, man. Um, but um, I'll, I'll also do that for some of you guys that just prefer the chats and you want your questions to stand out and just regularly support a couple of bucks every month. Uh, and then your, your questions stand out because you get a special icon. Um, but yeah, anyway, just something to think about. I'll might, I'll, I'll probably do that in the future. Um, martial arts, oriental medicine, uh, with his super chat, he said, human, can I join discord with a music mic? Yeah, of course. Dealing with much deep issues, facts of the, uh, TFM Coltane expose, not rage, but concern. Now I see more truths. What's happened with TFM Colte Expose? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. I don't really follow a lot of the drama that goes on. Um, but um, yeah, if you jump on Discord, maybe you can tell me what that's about. Uh, now I see more truths. Other actions, behaviors gets more, it uh, gets me, it cause lazy and their excuses work with people a lot. So how can you help? Yep. Okay. Yeah, jump on Discord. Um, yeah, even with a music mic, it doesn't matter. Actually, music mics are probably, especially drum mics, they're, they're a lot easier to listen to because they roll off the top end of your voice. So if you've got a lot of s -s -s piercing, 
it smooths that off and you get a lot more bass it um it muffles your voice a bit more on drum microphones um some instrument instrument microphones and they're easier to listen to so yeah any microphone will do uh just the guy says maybe you are just not interested in relationships in a given circumstance because it would wouldn't be of your best interest to pursue relationships if some conditions are not met first yeah if you know like the the entry to a relationship with me is just this and it's not much it's not like you're asking for a lot like she needs to be polite she needs to be nice it's like it's so ridiculous when you when you voice it it's like uh, the bare minimum that i will consider dating or she might be a potential girlfriend is she's polite uh we've got something to talk about we can talk effortlessly um we're interested in similar things our values a lot like just very basic stuff even politeness even if even if, even if you got one i enjoy spending time with her and she's polite and then you can add more specific ones but like have a, a base level of human decency now it's like oh well all women are like that and they all nag and they all like this and so therefore i should just tolerate it because that's the standard that i believe in it's like no that's an awful standard that's an awful person and you're trying to force a square peg into a round hole and everyone says it's fun it's not fun it's aggravating relationships are reality tv today as well it's all aggravation but we're being titillated by it it's 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 how women get um stimulated by drama men are getting stimulated by drama with women when did since when did men get off on that irritation i know there was a degree to it of it but like women would kind of behave more or less socially they would respect men like yeah you could kind of have your own personality and a man could get used to it but you know that's enough up to here respect your man and with a woman like that's enough up to here respect your man like we didn't really sanction like we didn't respect other men that used to you know hit their wives and stuff like that like there's limits right but then also pick the person you want to spend with uh, spend time with but now it's like now nah, they're all bad and so all that is out there now is men and women going out there to hate each other and that's it we get off on like a like a PORN relationships, like, you know, it's really, really stupid. It's like, that's what you call love. That's, the, that's something you need to go to therapy for. That's what people that really find a hard time, like um, uh, women or guys that they know that all they get off on is really aggressive, dysfunctional, um, bad relationships that aren't good for their health. And they finally go to a therapist and say, like, what's wrong with me? I need to get over this. That's what we're normalizing now. All women are awful. All guys can't be trusted. But we're going to have these tabloid reality TV style relationships. And we all get off. We think it's normal. Like, what's wrong? Like, is insanity normal? Friction and drama is normal now. Because women are leading the script of how relationships are to go. Adam Super AC, thank you for the encouragement. Uh, martial arts oriented until medicine says, um, I get so annoyed and have to mediate, uh, meditate and constantly contain myself so I don't say something stupid to someone, especially women. Their hope I was uh, to hope that I was understood. Thank you. Yeah, it takes time and practice. My patience my calmness uh my anxiety levels um correlate with how i've gotten better at speaking and voicing what i think and knowing what to say and knowing when to walk away and knowing when not to give people my energy anymore that comes with time you don't magically you know you don't get it handed to you Spec Ops 000 says, um, case in point, women think that the courtesy that men show other men is respect. Make me happy. Make me. 
yeah yeah that they, they again women can't see it from a man's point of view a lot of times same with men can't understand women's emotions because it doesn't make sense to them logically but women see men respecting like men can love and respect other men but we we need respect like a logical way to respect the person it's like i really respect that guy and a woman thinks like yeah oh well i want him to to feel that same way about me but i can't unless i respect you i can't embrace and trust you like i can trust that guy because i respect him and he's proven himself he's like he's objectively shown me like he's shown me that there's no two ways about it he wasn't putting on an act he's shown me that there's no more i need to be convinced that i can trust him therefore i can love and respect that guy a woman's like yeah i want you to respect me too i want you to trust me like yeah but you haven't earned my trust i oh, can't you just give it to me i see you trust him isn't it that easy just feel the same way you do about that guy no no he earned that what you want me to do work it's like yes you have to earn my trust I can't just give you intimacy. Well, why don't you? Are you too scared? You're not a real man if you don't just give me intimacy. Well, that requires trust. So all women have got is shame. Can't you just give it to me? I want it. I want it. <laughs> the catchphrase from most empty women. Can't I just have it? They're like that little kid in Rambo 2. Can I have it? Can I have it? And Rambo says, you want everything. <laughs> The only difference between that little kid and women is he says, I want to fight. <laughs> anyway, you Rambo fans will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, Feral Android, thank you for the super chat donation. He says, here's my membership dues. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping if I, if I set up a membership, uh, you guys that regularly donate, and I appreciate it, you can just pick a level of donation every month and you will stand out in the chat. And you don't have to keep donating all the time. And you can pick whatever you want to donate. If you feel like it. Again. This is the other thing. Like other guys that try and make me feel guilty by saying, look, you can donate if you want, but I don't make anyone donate. But I appreciate it. They also, uh, sometimes I think, do they realize that they think that that could be a reason why women walk all over them. If your guy goes on a date and says like, no, no, like um, you don't have to pay for anything. Like you'll pay for women all the time. Or, but at the same time, if you're at, the, at a pub with a guy and you go, no, no, I'll get the drinks this time, buddy. That's an actually nice gesture when someone shows you that they will contribute something. You know, they appreciate you. Uh, they like, and next time you'll get the drinks. Like, if I offer something that you, you, you appreciate, and if you're honest with yourself, you say, like, I at least want to throw a human a few bucks, which you don't have to. I, like, I do this because I care about this stuff. I hope it helps you guys. But when, like, guys can't actually appreciate receiving. And then, like, this is, I had to get over this as well. Like, for the longest time, um, I didn't monetize until YouTube said, look, we're monetizing your channel, even if you want to or not. YouTube a while ago said, like, if you don't monetize, we're going to monetize every channel we, we want because it's our platform. And if you don't collect the money, we will. So I would rather if people are contributing, if they're making money off my videos, I'd rather it kind of go to me and like you got like any money go to me and not them because of the way they treat people so i think about guys inability to receive if someone says thank you to me if a guy buys me a drink rather than fighting appreciate and say thank you and you offer something as well and this is at the heart of guys like when they find a woman they like it's like no i'll do everything you don't have to do everything i'll buy dinner i'll do this and they don't actually have any needs they feel it's manly not to accept up anything, not to have needs, not to have to say thank you because no, no, I'll do it. I'm a hero. I don't need any thanks. I don't need anything. I can survive on my own. But men's inability not to feel like they have any needs or they can say thank you or appreciative or a guy can buy them a drink. Um, that embarrassment that like, uh, not, do, do you know what I'm trying to say? I think some of that is at the heart of guys not being able to receive and then actually later 
uh, really um, rightly um, being annoyed at how much women expect and take from you today. Because women like take more than they did before. Women took this much from your grandmothers, but now they kind of, they take so much that they'll destroy you. They're not fair at all. Women were never fair, but now it's it's not even fair. It's completely like, it's 100% about what women want and like the man doesn't even exist. So I always wondered whether that kind of a guy refusing to be accept anything or have any needs or say thank you to a guy buying him a drink, that kind of like, no, 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 I can't accept anything. Like as a guy, I don't like accept anything. Whereas a woman, she loves accepting. She's the opposite. Like a woman will say like, ah, oh, nice skirt. Ah, oh, thank you. You look pretty. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, oh, I'm worth it. Like they love themselves like too much. Men don't love themselves at all. We can't accept anything. So um, anyway, end of rant. Nicholas said, did you go to university? Yes, I did. I went to two universities. I got um, a bachelor's in one thing and a postgrad in a something else at another university. Yeah, that's a, that's a good moniker, John. Don't be a cow or don't be a C-U-N-T. See you next Tuesday. Quasimandias adds, high conflict people are those who are used to not facing consequences for their aggression. One can fix that. Yeah. With guys, all guys, we really respect the guy that owns up to mistakes. If you're in a group of guys, we resent the guy who never takes ownership. But even if someone made a mistake, like if a guy made a big mistake, we respect the courage of a guy putting his hand up and saying, yeah, that was my fault. It's like, man, I can, I can, like, I feel like I kind of have raised him above some of the other guys that I don't quite know. At least I know him now. I can trust him to admit fault. Like if you don't know, um, you, you don't know much of the values of mo many of the guys. So no one's actually done anything positive for you. But one guy who's done something really bad, he's actually admitted to his mistakes I will trust him more than any of the other guys that I really don't know anything about because he's actually shown me that he can be trusted in some way, if that makes sense. Adam Super AC says, I, I keep hearing the line from Joe Jackson song saying, real men, uh, if there's a, if there's a war between the, the genders, then there's there'll be no people left. Yeah. I don't think it'll get there. It'll get so bad that um, we'll get desperate and um, people will start modifying their behavior. Look at how, um, how people changed, even psychologically, during these last two years when we were all isolated and forced to be so. Uh, thank you for some of the compliments, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in and watching. Thanks for the support. Thanks for you guys who super chat and donate. I really do appreciate it. It keeps the channel going. Because um, my channel's been kind of frozen for the last year. Uh, at about 103, uh, between 103 and 105, okay? Hasn't moved. Um so and also like and subscribe leave a comment say apple pie in the comment section just for the algorithm i don't care just interact because youtube uh just loves to see you touching and feeling and playing with the channel they don't like you a passive watcher they want you an active tactile watcher um how long have we been been going for, guys? Ooh, an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I haven't even read, aside from RP Mentor's comment, um, I had a lot of really interesting comments. What I might do is I might read them all out in a response video that I'll uh, release next weekend uh, in place of this stream because I don't think I'll be able to do it this, um, this coming week weekend. 
So this the next stream, next weekend stream, will be a Q and A. I'll I'll do it like this, but uh, you won't be able to kind of in real time ask me questions. But um, only because next week I won't be in Melbourne. But um, thank you everyone for joining in and asking me questions. I appreciate it. And uh, for those who have a microphone, I'll see you on Discord after this. Join the chat. Uh, learn how to use push, push to talk and make sure you let people talk and try not to interrupt. I know it's hard because there's no, there's no visual reference. You can't kind of tell. There might be a delay. But um, let's all be respectful. Let's not dominate conversations. Let's all, uh, let's not just talk about um, like what I've been talking about in the last couple of videos, let's not talk about the dumpster fire, the real reality TV angle of how bad men and women are, but let's try to imbue some sort of philosophical understanding, even if we talk about the same things. So if we talk about why do women or men act this way, let's try and have some reflective um, comments like, uh, I've always thought this. Uh, have you ever th have you ever thought that maybe A and B leads to C, like just really um, pathways to better understanding rather than regurgitating, you know, mudslinging. You know, I'm bad because I'm good because they are bad. That's a very childish, simplistic way to live through life, and you actually don't move forward. You stay you stay still throwing the rocks at the prison that you've escaped from. So. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next videos this week, guys. I won't be probably doing a stream next video, and I'll see you on Discord after this stream. I'll catch you then. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. And um, yeah, let's celebrate the world is coming out of all of this lockup. So that's great. All right. I'll see you soon, guys. Have a good day. Bye.